Well, I think quite a bit. You know, we put a lot of uh, details into our scrimmages and a lot of uh, emotions and penalties and rewards. And, you know, our guys, like a lot of college programs across the country, are fighting for to make a travel list and to make starting lineups. And the roles are still trying to be established. So they're fighting for individual recognition from the coaches. But then, uh, you know, it's kind of... Uh, the refreshing thing to start in a season, it'll be all of us against one team in a different color, where it's kind of been the pitchers versus the hitters and the battle within the battle there. And, uh, you know, our A team and B team, uh, with the evolution of this program, there, there's not a lot of difference in, if there is an A and a B player, there's not a lot of fall off in the second string player, where sometimes in years past, uh, the inferiority of the B team uh, didn't leave you with much uh, definition of a competitive team and in this case I think it's been a very competitive camp so to speak and guys are fighting for their positions we got some tremendous races going on and uh, they're fighting for different reasons and I, I think when we come together collectively it'll come out pretty good but that's the test that we're all looking forward to this time of the year. Excited to see them in the game? Yeah, I'm excited to play against somebody else where, you know, the other team doesn't know your signs and uh, whether they're catcher signals or offensive signs and to play against somebody else. And the barometer that comes with that, uh, Hawaii's a, have a lot of respect for Coach Trapasso and it's very difficult to win over there. We felt very fortunate to come out with a three out of four series last year. And Hawaii in itself presents some uh, challenges, not besides their baseball team, their fans are boisterous and rowdy and distractive and there's television of course the humidity over there will be a, a climate change for us so I'm not going to complain about yeah. that but, uh, <laughs> Better than there's this. some other challenges and then you know the time spent on the beach uh, and in the daytime or night games and things like that that you hope our guys are professional about the way they go about their business been there last year so they were there last year so yeah we've got some guys this is their fourth trip JJ yeah. Altabelli has been there four straight years and Last year was the first time that we came out off the island feeling like we accomplished something. So hopefully uh, the anticipation of getting off to a good start will, will be there. What's the rotation look like? Uh, we'll go with uh, Jake Reed on Friday, uh, Tommy Thorpe on Saturday, Cole Irvin on Sunday, and Jeff Gold on Monday. Christian able to throw? Yeah, Christian, will, uh, we think he can um, – probably get up to about 60 pitches so we've got him kind of logged in and relief for three innings uh, whichever game that comes mm -hmm. he might throw as early as the first game certainly we don't want to run the pitch count up on all of our starters who have the best endurance but uh, you know if they can get six or seven and then turn the, the ball over to the relief core uh, we'll be pretty satisfied with their starts that way. Oh, the catchers. The catchers is a dog a dog fight. Uh, right now, if we were going to play tomorrow, Josh Graham, the freshman from Roseburg, uh, would get the first call. Uh, we've got four games over there, so we'll split that up. Uh, Josh is certainly not hit, hitting on all cylinders, as you would expect a freshman playing that uh, high volume uh, position, where there's a lot of a lot of things to know as a youngster in our system. Uh, and so, hopefully, we'll see Josh continue to get more comfortable with all the system kind of things. He's playing awfully well physically. It's just some mental things that pop up every once in a while. So Sean Chase will be the other guy. And whether we go two games for Sean and two games for Josh, uh, that'll be up to the, see how uh, Josh uh, fends. You know, he'll probably start on Friday. Yeah, guess. Josh will start. Right? Yes. You mentioned kind of the experimentation there with the catching position. Are there any other positions you're, you feel like you'll be experimenting a lot with this weekend? No, that's the good news is uh, you know, we've got a lot of experience in returning athletes in the infield. Uh, the entire infield will be returners, the guys we finished the year with starting. And uh, maybe the only uh, thing that's uh, evolved recently is uh, we were trying uh, uh, Heinemann at, at catcher. Uh, and he was in the mix there. And we felt like he was uh, a little behind the other two kids. So we, we want his offense in our lineup. He's a very good player. And so we just recently put him out in center field. Um, and he, so far defensively, he's shown uh, that he can handle defensively that position. And really, to be honest with you, since we took him out of the catching position with that burden off of him, he's really taken off offensively. So that's probably the only other thing that, it, you know, Garlic and Thomas and Mendenhall and those kind of guys, uh, 
Stephen Packard, who came back from a church mission. So we've got experienced outfit, uh, outfielders and we've got experienced infielders. You haven't had much time to prepare. I mean, other than the win, wins, what do you expect to see out of your guys? Well, we hope they play duck baseball. And, you know, that's team baseball and that's hard baseball. And hopefully we won't have any bobbles on hustle and mentality. And, you know, you always go in hoping that you'll handle your end of the bargain, play catch, throw strikes, put the ball in play. Uh, I think we'll be able to do that, and, and it's just uh, fun for everybody to see how we measure up for somebody else that's trying to do the same things. But uh, I can assure you it's a business trip for us and, you know, the excitement of going to Hawaii, and our guys will be single-minded and uh, laser-focused on the job at hand, I hope. And uh, it, So far, this group seems to be a very special group. They've got last year's group of leaders, and all the challenges that we presented them, they've embraced. and and handled in a very professional way. So, uh, you know, the things you don't expect or the anticipation of starting a season, and even for the old coach, it's different. You know, I'll, I'll wake up different on Friday morning and excited. And some players handle that very well, and some players it gets in their way in the, the you know, the, the beginning of a season. And hopefully our guys will relax early in the series and we'll be able to play at our best that way. Jimmy Sherpy, a year ago at this time, sort of unknown coming off of down freshman year, but obviously really emerged last year as one of the best closers in the nation. But yeah, comfort level and being able to kind of hand the ball to a guy like that in the ninth inning tight situations, he's, he's, he's proven what he can do. Yeah, and he's, you know, he had some rough spots because he was shut down for a while and wasn't at his best in some of our scrimmages. Hmm. The last uh, two times that he's pitched uh, have been Jimmy Scherfey like and, and beyond Jimmy Scherfey like. He, was pitching at 94 miles an hour with that tight slider and throwing a lot of strikes. And we tease him about the wild thing music, yeah. and, and hopefully Jimmy uh, can maintain the excellence that he showed last year and at the back end of games and uh, not get in his way, so to speak, with a hit batter and a walk each sure. inning and set the table for the opposition. He's got electric stuff. He's awful hard to hit, and if, uh, if he can throw the ball in the strike zone, with him on with the ball at the end of the game, we feel pretty good about our chances. That's a good luxury. Absolutely. Just normal wear and tear in the arm, or is there something? Yeah, just, just a that? lot of innings and a lot of outings, and we shut him down. And uh, you know, when he first started to throw, it didn't feel totally comfortable. And so he's back, and he's 100. percent The difference in Jimmy this year and last year, we were kind of grooming him as a hybrid role, where he was actually starting our scrimmages. So. Uh, the first game when he threw over 100 pitches in relief, people raised their eye yeah. and said, what's up with that coach? And he had actually been going 90 pitches before that. You will not see Jimmy Scherfer throw 100 <laughs> pitches this time. Uh, he'll be a true okay. short reliever. So. How long was he shut down? Most of the fall? Yeah, all that? summer oh, okay. and, and uh, most, of the, most of the fall. Uh, just started back when he came back in January. Okay. Coach, you talked about going on this trip being kind of one track mind on the series. Do you feel like the fact that you've made this trip a few times in a row now and you have guys who have this experience under their belt helps keep the, the whole team on track? Yeah, our guys have been to some pretty fun places, you know, and Hawaii is one of those things where, you know, especially our California kids are looking forward to the beach again and, and those type of things. And, but, uh, you know, I think they put so much time and effort into the development of themselves and the ball club for the state of Hawaii or the distractions uh, of uh, the vacation kind of atmosphere in Hawaii. That would be pretty silly to let that get in the way of the fact that it's an important four games. And, you know, I, I think we lo the, the fact that we lost the first game and then reeled off whatever we reeled off 10 or 11 in a row went a long way to our self-confidence throughout the year. And the fact that we were able to close games and finish games was a big factor in how we had uh, such a tremendous year until the very end. And, I, you know, I, I think a lot of us still have a kind of a taste in our mouth that we didn't finish the job in the back and we didn't finish the job in, in regional play to, to get to the College World Series. And uh, so we still kind of have something to prove. You know, we haven't really done anything besides the media's expectations and the, the number five national seed was an honor but we didn't take advantage of that so we still got a lot to prove and you know it's our job as coaches to keep them uh, focused on the right things when we're over there now, yeah, one of the negative things for me in this whole deal is we got a 
you know, 36 guys, we'll get down to 35, and then we've got to establish a 28-man travel squad, so we're going to leave seven uh, family members at home, and then uh, the devastation or exhilaration of that first starting lineup becomes a, a factor, too. We actually gave them on Saturday a tentative starting lineup to ease the shock and awe of the first one that goes up when you're playing for real. Uh, and that'll be a major factor in the team chemistry, how people handle that. You know, if we got guys that get off the, the ship, so to speak, because they're not getting self-satisfaction of playing, we'll have some internal problems. You know, that was really the one of the keys to last year is we had an unselfish team. So they didn't care who was in the batter's box or who was on the mound or those kind. They did care, but they were supporting each other. And that's always the mystery on how your total roster handles those kind of emotions. and. Uh, these guys are real men, and I expect them to handle it like real men. I don't want them to like a secondary role. I just want them to uh, to accept it in a mature fashion. As coming off a winning season, you think the attitude the season the last year? I think, I hope so, in a good way. That, you know, we've kind of gotten close to the top of the mountain, but uh, as I've said many times before, when you get close to the top, it gets a little steeper, steeper, and it's a lot slipperier because uh, the people that you're trying to pass up are, are awfully good. They've been awfully good for a long time. So I don't think anybody in our program satisfied with the fact that we made a run at it last year. I mean, we've had great examples already in this program where we overachieved probably by expectation standards in 10, way underachieved in 11, and last year I think uh, – Arguably, we probably overachieved the expectation bug, not within our own clubhouse, but in the media. And so I, our upperclassmen uh, hopefully will educate our underclassmen to not really read your press clippings. It's all about what you do on the field. Tommy Thorpe was so good, kind of a setup guy to the men last year. You see one or two guys emerging early on. Or yeah, sort of uh, he's, been, he's been spectacular. Yeah. In fact, uh, Tommy was production-wise, our most, uh, our number one pitcher uh, in his outings. What a great luxury it would have been to have him as that bridge guy or setup guy to Jimmy. And that might happen, whether it's Tommy that comes out of the rotation and Christian Jones goes his endurance up. Brando Tesser's still not, uh, he's had a couple pickups in his shoulder and he's going to be fine, but he's also a guy that would be in that starting rotation mix. And, and if we can take uh, a left-hander like Tommy or Cole Irvin and put him in the, in the bullpen instead of a freshman named Garrett Clevenger that we have in that role right now, we just get better at the end of the game. So we'll see how that unfolds. And to, to, it would be a nice luxury to have Tommy there, especially with Jimmy. We don't intend with Sherfy to, to use him as a true closer in all four games in Hawaii if there's four save opportunities. We just don't think he's quite ready for that. Maybe down the road he will be pitch a you know, three-game series or a four-game series. What does Irvin show to obviously to earn a starting spot? Yeah. Maturity, commitment, he, uh, he's well ahead of the learning curve, so to speak, in his aptitude. In other words, he learned the system faster than all the other freshmen. He looks like a, a junior out there mm -hmm. pitching right now. He's real comfortable. He's got great presence. He's got uh, plus command, and he mixes three pitches effectively. And, you know, he had great credentials being a Team USA coming in here, and he hasn't disappointed us one bit. He's, he's got a very bright future. In terms of the lineup, you like Altabelli at the top? Or yeah, JJ player? will be down at the bottom. Okay. And, uh, that's where we think he functions okay. the best. And JJ's, uh, you know, he's not going to be a guy that puts up huge numbers, but he, he moves runners, he executes. The, the real good news is JJ will be our shortstop, and what a spectacular shortstop he is. Yeah. So Payne and uh, Hahn, uh, Payne and Heineman have been hitting at oh. the top, and you know my offensive coaches flip those coins okay. with my input. But uh, Aaron Payne's getting our leadoff hitter. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right, thanks, thanks guys. Thanks,